Good afternoon all. Today I'm looking at this uh, pan and tilt IP camera. Now I've just made a video all about the different ways you can uh, connect to this thing and view either a static image or a live image and I'll link to that video up here. But uh, in this video I'm going to take it apart. So I think we need to start on the bottom. Now these two holes here are for mounting the camera onto a special bracket. And uh, that's this thing. I've put the screws in a bag here so I don't lose them. But um, the other two screws, or other screws, I think are under these sticky feet. So I'm going to have to pull them off first. Yeah, so under here, there is the screw. And then let's do this other one. Don't really want to destroy these rubber feet, but there are the screws. Let's undo those. It looks like there's another screw under here, so that one needs to come out as well. And then we should be able to get this bottom plate off. With any luck, yep, there it is. Now that uh, looks like it's the Wi-Fi module, and there are different versions, EU, Japan, France I suppose that is, um, because they have different uh, frequency ranges. Now I've undone the screws on the main board, so let's take that out. Ah, yes, there we go. Uh, yeah, right, so this is the pan motor, um, and that's the stuff on the main board. Let's have a closer look. Well now, there are quite a few uh, very large scale integration chips on here. These two look like RAM, or memory of some sort, flash possibly. Um, this one up here, the Realtek, I would guess is to do with Ethernet and networking. Um, there's a very, very uh, large processor here. This is probably the main processor, uh, or maybe that's it, doing uh, things like JPEG compression of the images and then sending it on to Ethernet. Uh, I'm not sure what these are, but they could be. That looks like it might be a motor driver, uh, possibly. It's near the connections which go off to the motors. This coloured cable goes to the... Uh, main pan stepper motor. Um, now interestingly up here there's obviously an optical sensor. Let's get the light on it. So the um, the pan mechanism isn't just being banged up against its end stop. It's actually going to an optical sensor to uh, register the zero point. The motors here look really nice quality actually. I think I'll take one of those out now. So this is the uh, pan motor stepper motor, it's a moto tech. Now let's put power onto the board and then this thing will try and drive the uh, pan mechanism to the optical sensor and of course it'll fail. So let's see what happens. And I presume it's uh, failed. It stopped but it won't have um, read the optical sensor so it doesn't seem to be uh, giving any sort of error message. So now the pan, uh, the panning camera head moves completely freely and this just feels really smooth. I'm beginning to think this is a really quality item actually. Now as for the end of travel sensor, the little board there, you can just see underneath how something moves around and will block the infrared beam there and that tells it it's reached the end of travel. So it's an optical sensor. Now the wires that go to the tilting head are extremely fine. Um, I would imagine these ones on these two connectors here that don't go through this um, filter, this uh, what's it called, a ferrite block, they're probably motor and then the ones that do go through that ferrite block are presumably video and that comes down to this connector. Now the tilting head, this thing here, looks like it has uh, a single screw in there. So let's take that out. And uh, I'm also going to completely unscrew the lens focus mechanism, just in case that's holding two halves of the uh, case together. Let's take that off. Well, now there are some tiny black screws, which I think hold the top onto whatever rotates here and I've got a feeling you access these through this hole under the stepper motor. So let's try undoing those. And now I think these exposed pegs have to be squeezed. Quite difficult to do with the camera in the way so I'm just going to do that off camera. And uh, yeah that seems to have released the top part from this uh, 
sort of boss here. Now there's one more screw there holding the two halves of the top part together, so let's get that out. Now I'm struggling to work out how to get this uh, head part apart. Um, one of these uh, clips has already broken, that one looks like it's about to fall off. So uh, I've got to be very careful I don't destroy this thing while taking it apart. What I have noticed is that this little peg here appears to break the infrared beam in the sensor here which detects end of travel for pan. Um, but now I really want to get, um, maybe try and get these wires through here so that this piece is completely separate because it's quite difficult holding the two parts without straining these very tiny wires. So I'm just going to mark these two connectors so that when I put them back I get them the right way around. That one I think I can work out, or well, maybe I'll put a center line on that one, uh, so that I can uh, get all these back in the right place and not blow anything up. So I've uh, pulled all the wires uh, out through the central, uh, well hole in the center of the rotating bit. Um, they had to be tipped on edge to get them out, but at least they are now out. And now I'm left with just the head part. And there are screws I can see sort of inside these side pieces like there and inside there. But I can't at the moment see how to get to them because the camera head is in the way. So uh, let's keep going. Right, it's even more apart now. Um, there's the little opto sensor for the tilt end stop. And I suspect this little peg on the end here is the flag that goes into that opto sensor to tell it that the tilt mechanism has reached its end stop. Um, I've still got the camera unit uh, with its tilt motor there, another Mototech motor um, in one piece, and I don't seem to be able to pull that out. And I still don't seem to be able to open the camera housing, which I'd like to do, so I'll pursue or persist with that. Well, now I've managed to get the uh, camera out of the unit that drives it. It's actually got a D-shaped drive there, and that means presumably that I can now split the camera shell, which I haven't been able to do up to now. And it makes sense because that D piece was uh, inside there. But now I can't get the front part open. So that's what's inside. Uh, a really nice high quality pan and tilt camera. Of course, when I say high quality, it's engineered well, but the camera module, of course, only goes up to 64480. Uh, now we've got high def units coming out. The image quality was never particularly good. It was always a bit soft, flat, lacking in color. So it'd be very interesting to compare this 10 year old unit with a more modern camera. And I have got one on its coming on its way. But I think the biggest problem I'm going to have is gluing this peg back onto here so that it uh, clips back onto the rotating part. Where's that? Oh yes, in here somewhere. And uh, I can get this back together so that it will actually rotate probably. So I think some plastic glue to glue that back onto there, see how that works out. But uh, for the moment, that's it. That's what's inside uh, a pan and tilt IP camera. Oh, I've got to put this thing all back together again now. Cheerio.